everyone, and welcome to a packed house at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. I'm Art Ekman, along with Dave Despain, as we begin the 1994 Supercross season, the first of 15 events this year. About this time last year, we weren't quite shocked yet that a rookie would <laughs> dominate this series in Jeremy McGrath. You mean you didn't predict that Jeremy <laughs> McGrath would go off and win 10 races in a single campaign, break the one-year win record, and not just win the championship, but absolutely dominate. Take all the biggest names in this sport and whip them up one side of the field and down the other. It was an amazing performance. Well, I don't think he's going to shock anybody like he did last year. In fact, I don't think he's going to win uh, as many as 10 races like he did, but... I think he's going to win the series. And you and I don't agree on that because I think the man to beat this year is Jeff Stanton. Stanton is back as a man on a mission. He's a three-time champion who just had an off year in 1993. He was over-focused, I think, on Damon Bradshaw. He wasn't thinking about winning the championship. He just never got on track. He's taken the offseason to try to do that, and I think he's got the speed and the experience to show us what he's really made of. Now with Damon Bradshaw retired, we've got a new name in the Yamaha camp. Michael Craig gets a huge opportunity here, doesn't he? The chance to ride Damon's motorcycles with Damon's uh, support and, unfortunately, not Damon's contract, which was worth more money than you and I could even imagine. The point is, Craig has the opportunity here to break through. If he's got the conditioning to match the speed so he stops falling off that motorcycle, he could win some races. There's a guy in a Kawasaki that's won this race two years running. Mike LaRocco has won the opener, but he's had trouble throughout the season with injuries. If you only get one name in the pool for Orlando, make sure it's LaRocco's. He's going for the three-peat tonight. Tremendous speed here, and I think the wrist is probably healed. I mean, I think he's 100%. He won an outdoor national crown at the end of last year. It could be Big, Big Mike's year. I think his teammate, Mike Kudrowski, too, he shows consistency, and if there's going to be a year for consistency, this is going to be it. Buddy, can I buy a start? That's the, uh, <laughs> that's the story of Mike Kudrowski. If he could win the first 10 feet of these races, he could be the Supercross champion. He still has to prove he can get it done in the stadiums. Now we've got three former 125 champions, either outdoor or Supercross, who could make a breakthrough this year. Let's go with Emig. Jeff Emig, great guy, a lot of speed, needs to make just that, a breakthrough. He's never won one of these things, been close a few times, lacks the consistency. Brian Swank took a second place in Seattle last year. I think Brian might be in the shape. He had injury problems last year, and he might have the machine this year to break through. Remember that a year ago this time, it was supposed to be Swank versus McGrath, for the Rookie of the Year honors. McGrath went on and won everything in sight. Swank struggled. I think he's got something to prove. And Henry last year was a last-minute uh, addition to the Honda team, and he surprised everybody with seven straight victories, winning the 125 East title. The way I read it, this ought to be the Jeremy McGrath of 1994. Here's Doug Henry, dominates in 125, comes to Team Honda, gets the 250, gets the big contract. He ought to win 10 races and take the championship. We have a new man trackside this year. He's already world famous for being the host of Motor World 2 and ESPN 2, Jerry Bernardo. And Jerry talked with these riders down in the pits this afternoon. It's kind of like spring training. Everyone's excited, encouraged to get back into the game. And nobody has lost yet. They all believe that they can win the championship. But one thing is for sure, all the pretenders are physically and mentally prepared to win tonight's Supercross. I think in the past I haven't trained as hard, and then like a three, four weeks before the races, I start really getting into it, where this time I try harder. And, um, you know, hopefully I'll see some results quicker in the Supercross season so that halfway through I'm not just getting started, started winning. You know, I'll be winning right off the bat. It's a new bike. I'm happy with everything that's, that's gone on during the winter. All the testing's been great. My mechanics have been pushing me pretty hard. And um, I feel like I can be, a, you know, a good competitor right now. I can go up there and run at the top. Well, I prepared myself a lot differently, differently than I have any other year. I've been doing it for a lot of years. And I, I basically, I had to. I was just burnt out last year, had no fun. So uh, I predict that, you know, I'm gonna be a contender all the way through this thing to win in every race. You know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be right there banging bars with whoever's up front because I'm having fun and it's uh, I brought the energy back into it one of the main things that I have to do this year is to stay healthy because you know most other stuff will come so it's just uh, not taking any chances and you know making sure before I do anything that I feel up to it I had a pretty good off season in Europe and uh, I don't know I expect to keep keep the ball rolling there's some guys that are riding really good but uh, I think, I think I'm feeling strong and ready to win. Hey, that kid has a right to be confident. He's booming the number one plate. But one race doesn't make it a season. It'd be pretty encouraging to all the other teams that took a back seat to Jeremy if they could beat him to the checkered flag tonight. Back to Art and Dave up on the booth. 
Thanks, Jerry. As we prepare for the premiere of the 1994 Supercross season, we'll be back in a moment. Nothing's hotter during Honda's Red Hot Deal days at your participating Honda dealer. But hurry, it ends April 30th. The fans anxiously awaiting of heat number one. Hey, and I'm not the only one who thinks Jeff Stanton is the man to beat in 1994. I'm all for those folks up there in Section 6G. Great crowd here in Orlando. Is the Orlando track very similar to last year? But it has a different look coming from Jerry Bernardo, the host of Photo World 2. Okay, the most important thing in Supercross is the start. Jeremy McGrath, pole shot king. Ricky Johnson said one time, there's two major important parts to a race. From the starting gate to the first turn, and from the first turn to the checkered flag. Uh... First turn last year was McGrath. Who's it going to be this year? I can make this triple. I can make this triple. The triple. I can make it. Not me, man. Gosh. Last year, Cooper, LA Supercross. Remember that? Who's it going to be this year? Position triple. That's about 90 feet. Ah. I just landed from 90 feet. Hey, is anybody going to make this? Big bowl turn. I gotta get on the gas because this will kill a whoop. Man, kill a stadium whoops like these. Hey, you know what? There's only 20 more. That's the most killer track I've ever seen. And this is the time to do the Style King. I have had it. I've wiped out already. Hot day, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I told you it was gonna be different. We're getting ready for heat number one of the qualifying of the 250s. The top four riders from each heat transferring to the main event. Those not making it out of the heats, qualifying heats, go to the two semifinal rounds, of which five riders from each will go on to the main event. Then there's the last chance where only two riders have a shot at the 20 rider field. Here in our first heat, as we take a look at the highlights, Dave, we've got Mike Kondrowski, Larry Ward, Jeff Stanton, some big names ready to fire up and try to get into that main. All those off-season months focused on this moment. The first drop of the gate of 1994. It can set the tone for the entire season. I'm ready for Supercross. The riders revving up, getting set as the time clock ticks down. And they're off. Good start by Jeff Stanton. Number five on the inside, but look at big surprise. Larry Ward, number 11, gets the whole shot. He's trying to rekindle his career. Wow, great start for number 11. Riding a Yamaha this year, Larry Ward charges out in front of Jeff Stanton. Yes, Stanton looks good, but how about Larry Ward? That's a shocker. Brooks in third, swing number 10. Brooks now trying to catch up on Stanton. As the leader Ward opens ground, I want you to watch the move by number 10. Brian Swink back in fifth spot. Cuts to the inside right across the top of the whoops. A double pass. What a move. Swink is a rocket ship. He looked great in practice and is showing it here in our highlights of heat number one trying to qualify for the main event. Larry Ward still setting the pace with Stanton trying to catch him. 
Ward is definitely pumped. When you can get this kind of a start, not only for the race, the night, but also for the season, it's a terrific boost. Ward, after a great 1990 season, trying to rekindle that career. And here's Michael Craig, number 19, making the pass on Brooks. The new member of Team Yamaha replaced the retired Damon Bradshaw. That was the big off-season story. Great opportunity for Craig. He's caught Swink, and that's pretty impressive because Brian Swink has been a man on a mission tonight. Craig always fast, but the question was, could he finish a race? Well, he's trying to approach a little more conservative this year. Down goes Brett Emmy. Jeff Emmy will have to go to the semis, it looks like. He took a tumble. Frustrating way to start the campaign. That's the other factory Yamaha, the teammate to Michael Craig. Stanton made his move now on Larry Ward, and watch this. The new Jeff Stanton coming into the 94 season. Lots of aggression, lots of determination. Took a lot of time off during the offseason. And if that move right there is an indication, this man is ready to come back and claim his fourth championship. Larry Brooks, number 31. And it's three, Mike Kudrowski, who got off to a bad start. Now let's see if Kudrowski, his offseason training pays off in the heat as he takes Brooks. The story of Mike Kudrowski's Supercross career is bad start. That's for fifth spot. That's not good enough for the transfer. Here comes Stanton getting the checkered flag. Stanton, Ward, Swink, and Craig to the main event. No huge surprise in Jeff Stanton's victory there. The big surprise in that one, I think, was the terrific start for Ward. Let's hear from the winner, Jeff Stanton. Okay, Jeff Stanton, you're out there sending a message to the competition, winning that first 250 main. It's all good. I just need to carry that on into the main event. Okay, a little bobble from Ward. We didn't see what happened with him. He just bobbled. He wasn't able to jump and jump over here, and I jumped by him. And you were shredding after that. Good luck. Thank you. The number one plate of Jeremy McGrath as he gets ready for heat number two to try to qualify for the main. There were three big riders that did not make the main in heat number one. Brooks, Kudrowski, and Emig as we look at Mike LaRocco. Boy, what a matchup that'll be in this heat race as that's Lampson, the Honda teammate of Jeremy McGrath. A lot of Honda power in this one because this guy, Doug Henry, the Eastern 125 champion from a year ago, is also on the gate on bike number eight, ready to do what Jeremy did last year. These are the highlights of heat number two. Four riders trying to qualify for the 20 rider field in the main event, 250 Supercross. Will McGrath get the jump once again? It looks like he's got another great start. Jeremy McGrath gets the hold shot. Lamps and LaRocco also right there. Looks like a good battle forming up immediately. When you got that ability to get to the first turn first, it's magic, but look at this. Out of nowhere, Lampson zephyrs right by McGrath and takes the lead. When was the last time you saw anybody pass Jeremy? It won't be long, of course, <laughs> as uh, we see Jeremy retake the lead and go for it. Toward the back of the pack now, I shouldn't say the back of the pack, because it's a battle for third. We've got number 21, Jeff Matasevich and Mike LaRocco. LaRocco doesn't stay there long, however. Twice a winner, two in a row at Orlando. He's working on third place, Matasevich, a Yamaha-mounted privateer for 1994, and he holds LaRocco off for the moment. That was just for the moment, as these are highlights. LaRocco will make his move and take him on the inside. Morocco so good at squaring off corners and applying the quickness that he's shown throughout the years. He's healthy this year, and that's a big deal for Morocco. The wrist injury that hampered him last year, we talked about at the top of the show. When he's healthy, he is a tough man to beat. Now it is Henry and the chicken battling for fourth and fifth. And that's important. Fourth is the transfer spot. Fourth gets you a ticket straight to the main. Fifth, you've got to ride the semi. Henry needs that transfer spot, but I'm impressed with the way number 21, Jeff Matasevich, is riding that privateer Yamaha. Larocco, not content with third, passing Lampson for second place. This is the speed that's carried him to victory here. Two years running, Lampson comes right back the key in Supercross is all timing and rhythm. You can't let it fluster you when that guy makes that move, puts the wheel in front of you. You've got to stay cool. That's what Lampson's doing. McGrath not letting anything bother him coming from the rear. Morocco still putting pressure on Lampson. Morocco's looking for a great injury-free year. There's
there's no question about that. Mike Morocco also looks for another place to go. See how he uses the different line? He was up alongside Lampson, couldn't complete the pass. That's one thing Morocco does very, very well. He won't follow. He'll find a place to pass. See how he squares that corner off? You made the allusion to that. It sets him up for the inside for the next turn, and this time, Morocco makes the pass count. Morocco currently in second place. He won the 500 outdoors last year. It gave him a big boost of confidence as we check out the leader in this heat number two, Jeremy McGrath, and he does the can-can. He's been practicing that quite a bit where he takes one foot off the peg and brings it back over the bike. McGrath winning heat number two, LaRocco second, Lampson third, with Henry getting in the main in fourth. Jeff Matasevich in fifth, not making the main. Uh, Jeremy is a styling kind of a guy, isn't he? He wins the first heat of the brand new season and then talked about it. Once again, you didn't miss a beat. You make it look so easy. How was it? Well, Jerry, I'm a little bit tight right now. You know, it's the first race of the year, and uh, I got a good start. And went out there and was in front for a while, then the Rocco was charging on me. But then I was goofing off too on the last lap, so uh, I was going to say, did you feel the heat from Morocco right near the end? He was right behind you. Yeah, I think the whoops are my weak point at the moment. You know, in the heat race, I think uh, by the man event, I should have him down. I just got to... Sounds like it's showtime. Yeah, I hope so. Good luck, kid. Thanks. Back of the pit, Skip Norfolk, the mechanic for Jeremy McGrath, giving him a piece of his mind about the aerial antics and the, the show-off. He, he doesn't particularly care for that. Over the Kawasaki pits, they are very concerned about this man's performance. Yeah, I, I got out the gate good, but I got into some problems in the first turn, just kind of banging bars with other riders and kind of got the worst of it and was back in the pack. And I just think I need to ride a little bit more aggressive and, and try that in the semi and see how that works out. In contrast, what a great start for the Nolene Sizzler Yamaha of Larry Ward. Yeah, I felt real good. I got the good start. Um, my Nolene Yamaha is running real good, and um, it's a new team. It's a new start. I was a little nervous in that race, and Stan got by me. But um, you know, it's a long season, and I'm I'm starting off faster than I ended off last year. So I'm looking forward to a great year. Jeff Emick crashing in his heat race. He'll have to go to the semis, and we'll get to that semifinal action after this. Welcome back for Supercross action from Orlando, the season's opener as we head to the semifinal number one, the number three plate of Mike Kudrowski having his problems. Kudrowski will be joined in this semifinal heat by Jeff Emig, who had a crash in the opening qualifying round. Emig working very hard in the offseason, got some advice from Damon Bradshaw as well. He says he's the most prepared this year for Supercross as he's ever been. And it's Emig getting the inside track. Watch number six. He blitzes inside for the whole shot. And going, uh, getting jammed up there is number 27, Denny Stevenson. Bad break from that first turn tangle happened. It let Emig get away, though. He opened up the big early lead here and looked like he was long gone. In fact, he's looking back over his shoulder, perhaps wondering where Mike Kudrowski is. Well, he is fourth, actually, behind Larry Brooks and Keith Johnson. And that is not what they pay Mike Kudrowski to do. <laughs> There's Brooks, number 31, taking the inside track on Johnson. Johnson, a former KTM rider, now with Yamaha. And Brooks with Nolene Yamaha, Larry Ward's teammate. Kudrowski trying to make an inside move now as we watch the highlights from our semifinal heat number one. Got around Johnson in pretty good form here, but as you watch Mike Kudrowski, it's clear that the rhythm is just not quite Right. It, it's, what, 80%, something like that. Emig, on, in contrast, out front doing everything perfectly. He's opened up the lead. Yep. See here? Off the, off the whoops, he just couldn't keep the front end in line, and he loses all the ground he made up. It's just a bad night for Kudrowski. Well, it'll be a, a worse night if he can't take on Brooks and successfully pass him. Off the tabletop, Kudrowski just can't get the speed generated out of the corners. It surprises me, too, because he had such a terrific outdoor season last year. He's the 250 national champ, struggling in Supercross. And the 250 Supercross title is the only title this young man has not succeeded in. Emig pulls off the win. Number 31 hangs on for second. Good ride for Larry Brooks. 
Kodrowski, a disappointing third. Got to be impressed with Denny Stevenson after that first turn tangle. Came back for fifth and a transfer. Jeff, you look so much more comfortable in this race than the other one that you took a little digger. How was it out there? Yeah. Uh, you know, I started off a heat race, man. I was uh, pretty nervous, and I got past through the whoops. I don't know. first couple laps, man, I'm coming to this step up. I'm going to rail, you know, I'm going to rail the rest and get it. Next thing I know, man, the rear end slides completely all the way out. Next thing I know, I'm touching the rear tire. I figure when you're touching the rear tire, something's going wrong. First few laps, it looked like you were either waving to the crowd or adjusting your goggles. What was it? I think I was just telling myself, you know, like, this is the time, you know, it's the time to do it. You know, and I was comfortable the whole race. I nailed the whoop sections almost every lap. I was really, really happy with that. You know, but I want the crowd, you know, I want them there for me. You know, I want them, you know, I want them to know, you know, that, you know, that I'm here, you know, what's put on the show. Sounds like confidence for the main. Good luck, kid. Okay, thanks, Jerry. That's perfect. He crashed in the heat. He came back and won the semi. Stay cool. That's what Supercross is all about. Good job, Emmett. On the near side, you saw Phil Lawrence, along with Kyle Lewis on the near side. And a good shot as we get ready for the semifinal heat number two highlights. And breaking out in front, Matasevich. Very good start. Number 21 on the inside. He's out there with Todd DeHoof, and DeHoof may be the surprise in this one. He couldn't quite pull off the lead, but he's got second spot. Chasing him are Kyle Lewis, Eric Kehoe back there, number 18 is Phil Lawrence. Lewis also participating in the 125 West Supercross Series. Trying his hand at the 250s and to try and get into the main. Matasevich has something to prove. Former factory rider, the great uh, rival of Damon Bradshaw. Now he's on privateer stuff. He needs to do some business tonight. Number 18, factory Phil Lawrence. Number 15, Eric Kehoe, as they go for third, fourth, and fifth place. Todd DeHoop got the good start, but he's not able to sustain the speed. There comes Kehoe along the outside, looking back over his shoulder, and factory Phil triples into fourth spot. Nice move. Matasevich out of La Hambra, California on that Yamaha. He's out of a U-Haul van, as you mentioned. He's invested his own money this year in getting back into the circuit. There are some problems for Matasevich. See that bobble right there? We'll follow this for a little bit. He's out front. He's got a big lead, but then he starts making mistakes. Bang! Clobbers the hay bale. Every one of those bobbles costs you time on the racetrack. But these guys try to catch up. And some energy as well. Fighting back. Matasevich still holding out of the lead. Factory Phil Lawrence there at Kehoe, number 15. They've got a battle of their own. That's a nice matchup. Kehoe's about uh, the same age as Dirk. He's been around this a long time. Lawrence is the young kid, and Eric's using the experience here to hold Lawrence at bay. This is for third and fourth. He's had a lot of experience making 13 mains the hard way last year. His best finish was a 10th. He looks back a lot. That would be the only criticism I would make of him. Uh, you don't want to be looking back in Supercross. You want to be looking for the next guy. Don't be worried about who's behind you. The chicken already passed. Lewis, Lawrence, Kehoe, all fighting. But look at that. Once again, he missed his ship, cased it a little bit, and Kyle drops out of the sky. Kyle Lewis. Because he lost his momentum, Matasevich couldn't do the triple. You didn't see Lewis launch, but you do see Matasevich come back. He's a tough cat, but he's making a lot of mistakes. There, Lewis was short on the jump, and that'll give the number 21 machine a couple of bike lengths extra to work with. Look at this. They come to the checkered flag this close. Number 21, Matasevich, chased by Lewis and Kehoe and Lawrence just that close as they hit the flag. Impressive comeback and hold on by Jeff Matasevich for that first place finish. Let's take a look now at the order. These guys going to the main, Matasevich, Lewis, Keyhole, Lawrence, as we expected. Cliff Palmer got the KTM in there. Kicking Matasevich, full privateer scene. Kicking butt out there, wire to wire. A little pass by number 53. What was up? Yeah, you know, I got out in the lead and I started to relax. It looks like on this track you can't relax. You're going to have to ride aggressive the whole race. They caught up to me. I made a mistake with a triple. He passed me, but uh, I wasn't about to let him hang on to that lead. Mid-race, I think you clipped the hay bale out back, did you? Yeah, over the triple jump, I landed on the hay bale, and uh, I wasn't really sure what the bike was going to do, but I made it. How do you feel now about the main and all that? I feel really good. You know, I bought the bike. North County Yamaha has helped me, Pro Circuit, Extreme, Bell, my mechanic, Ron Heben, uh, all had to pull together to get me here. 
and I just owe them a lot. And the fans here that seem to be behind me, hopefully I'll uh, be up on the podium tonight. As Bob Hanner himself would say, good luck in the main, kid. Thanks. <laughs> good job. Here are the riders that made the last chance. Todd DeHoop and Jeremy Buell go to the main. It's time now for the young potential superstars in the sport to compete in the 125cc action. Your favorite in the East Division, Ezra Lusk, feels it's his year after a learning experience back two seasons ago following his teammate Brian Swink, the defending 125 Eastern champion. But as you can see here, number 117 was very impressive. Brian is a real good rider, and I learned a lot from him that first year, and uh, I thought I was going to be able to come back and win the second year. Um, Doug gave us all a big surprise. He moved to Team Honda, and I think that helped him out a lot. And uh, so I had to follow, do second place again for the second year. So this year I'm just going to go out and, and do my best, and uh, I'm not going to play second fiddle to nobody. Doug Henry was certainly a surprise, adding to the frustration for Ezra. He is now in his final season of 125 action. Well, everyone's been telling me, you know, you're learning, you're making mistakes, but you're learning, you're not going to do it again. Well, I think I'm really tired of learning right now, and uh, I think I've matured over the, uh, over the uh, fall. But there is a new young challenger on the block, a winner of 24 National Amateur Championships, Robbie Rayner. Back in 1993, he turned 16, and in his first pro race, was doing very well, number 593 when some tragedy struck him for that season anyway as he came out of it with a broken wrist but he recuperated Dave sure did Artie came back to win an outdoor national and rain as the rookie of the year but then he was hurt again during the offseason he injured his shoulder so his health is something of a question coming into this uh, season opener um, the first time I hurt my shoulder I was, it wasn't really a no big deal and then the second time, I was, like, wondering if I was going to be ready for the Supercross. And I, I've only been riding for, I think, three weeks, maybe. And that's, I've been working out maybe four weeks. And I, I've been working out really hard, trying to train and get in shape for everything. And I feel really good for it. My, I feel stronger, almost stronger than I did before. Sounds like he's ready to challenge with this new number, number 33. Coming up next, 125 main event highlights from Orlando. Time for the 125 main. Ezra Luskin Cruz. We look at number 33 as Robbie Rayner. Number 28, Tim Ferry. He's a hometown favorite coming out of West Palm Beach, Florida, and thrilled the fans with a winning heat race earlier. Ah, uh, yeah, but the guy everybody's talking about is Ezra Lusk. Third year in the class. He needs to get that championship under his belt. Robbie Rayner saying this rivalry is going to be neat. Sounds like a 16-year-old, <laughs> doesn't it? As we check the highlights of the 125 main, number 17 on the inside gets the whole shot. But look out, we've got some problems down there now. Chad Lowe out of North Carolina, and he got Robbie Rayner caught up. Number 33 was caught behind him, so Lusk gets the whole shot, gets away, and the guy who was supposed to challenge him, Robbie Raynard, gets stuck in the traffic in the back. Here he is. And he's having trouble getting that rhythm back now. As yeah. He's going to have to take some cool to get it going. Ezra Lusk out on top. Scott Sheik, number 37, comes next. And uh, Shane Lawson cutting on the inside corner there. Jimmy Button, though, is the fast rider here. Remember Brian Swink's line across these whoop de doos in the qualifier for the 250s? Now, Button thought he was going to use that same line, got the nose a little high, and uh, he only picked up one spot. I thought he was going to get all three of them there. He's definitely on the move. Makes his move now as a teammate sharing information possibly on the whoop section. Look at number 37, Sheik, just about falls off as Button goes singing by him. A little bit of a block pass there. Number 92 is Mike Brown, also losing a spot. 37, Scott Sheik, and Tim Ferry does the move from the sky. Tim Ferry, a former Rookie of the Year, last year had a tough time. Expected a lot more from himself on a Yamaha, has changed to Honda. He had two second-place finishes last year. Riding the way he's riding now, he's going to live up to all of his 94 expectations. He is charging through the traffic. I mean, he went around Brown like Brown was stopped. In second place, but as you can see, not making a large advancement toward first to Jimmy Button, a victim of some hard crashes last year. Very disappointing season. Robbie Raynard making his way up through the pack. This is pretty impressive. Raynard completely lost his rhythm after that first turn crash, but this is a pass on number 51, Chad Pedersen, last year's second-ranked rider in the division. 
It moves Robbie into fourth place on the last lap. Good move. Meanwhile, Ezra Lust taking McGrath's philosophy of having more fun, not approaching it with such a life and death situation. He takes the checkered flag for his initial win of the year. Jimmy Button, a well-earned second place. Good comeback for him after last year's struggle. He could be very pleased to get off on this kind of a start. But how about Ezra? Ezra looked strong, showed his strength as well as quickness, and didn't crack while out in front. Ezra Lust takes the victory in the first race of the season. Jimmy Button, Ferry, Raynard, and Pedersen rounding out the top five. And as we take a look at the rest of the top ten, let's go to Motor World 2's Jerry Bernardo. Jerry. All right, Ezra, Wyatt a Wyatt. How did that feel out there? Oh, it felt great. It felt like 1993. I'm just going to have to carry it along to the next race and the next race. So I keep getting these good starts, you know, get out front. I'm strong. I didn't get tired a bit. So hopefully, you know, I can, I can do some more winning the rest of the series. Also on a Suzuki out of Corning, New York, Jimmy Button, second place finisher. Okay, Jimmy Button, last year you had a good crash party going on. You're trying to stay away from that, looking good in this one. Yeah, yeah. You know, last year was just a... I, I'd, I'd rather forget last year, but this year, uh, second place, first race of the year isn't too bad, so we'll just keep working on it, keep working, trying to get stronger, and, uh, you know, I, I was real consistent out there. I stayed real consistent. Me and Ezra stayed pretty much about the same ways apart, so as long as I can get out with them in, the, you know, the next few races and uh, hopefully beat them, you know, I can get some points next weekend in the East-West. You know, if I can uh, win that and, you know, maybe some other guys on the East Coast not do so well, then I can, you know, maybe get a points lead and just uh, work with that for the rest of the year. But, hey, uh, I'm, I'm happy with second place. And ready to bust the champagne as Timmy Perry shows he might have been rookie of the year, but he did not learn how to open the champagne bottle. Ezra Lusk wins the first 125 East Division race of the season. Art Ekman and Dave to Spain, and this is the moment the fans in Orlando, Florida at the Citrus Bowl have been waiting for the main event, the 250cc Supercross opener. 37,000 fans wondering if history will repeat itself or will somebody step up and challenge Jeremy McGrath and make a run at that 1994 championship. This is going to be good. Can McGrath continue on that torrid pace that brought him 10 wins last year, breaking the single season record and who cares if he was a rookie or not? He won the championship in his first year. It's a good start. And it's Larry Ward, number 11, in front of Jeremy McGrath. Wow. What a terrific start for Ward twice in a row. He did it in the heat. He does it again in the main event. He's got McGrath behind him. Henry is third and Jeff Stanton fourth. Also Keyhole in fifth. But Larry Ward taking the corner. And here's the challenge from Jeremy McGrath. Oh, you see him look over at the, uh, What are you doing up here, Ward? Larry Ward had the lead. McGrath came up alongside. Ooh, and now Brian Swink is down and Kudrowski with him. They collided together. They were both in the mid-pack when this collision took place. Kudrowski off to a very slow start. Swink, I know, is disappointed after very fast practice times. Ward number 11, and that's number 8. Henry, Henry makes the inside move on Ward. McGrath now is third. What a battle. Unbelievable to see Jeremy McGrath blitzed not only by his teammate, but by the privateer Yamaha, Larry Ward. This guy's been taking his vitamins. This is a true rekindling of a career we're seeing right now as he's twice today shown great strength out front. He's pulling away from these guys in the early laps, Art. And with second place Doug Henry between him and Jeremy McGrath, this is a great opportunity for Larry Ward. There's nothing but red blanks you see after Larry Ward because that's Jeff Stanton just being in a good position. And it's McGrath taking the inside on Henry on the whoops. McGrath flawless in that move. There you see it, Stanton, Lampson, Craig. McGrath said his goal tonight was to improve on last year when he finished fourth. I have a feeling his goal is a little higher than that. <laughs> He's headed toward a roster, man, that's for sure. We'll be right back with more exciting action from Orlando in a moment. Back to the action in Orlando, Florida, as we see Doug Henry and Stanton currently second and third to Jeremy McGrath. 
Henry, a great find for a Honda. It was a last-minute decision last year and went on to win the 125 East title with seven straight victories. And definitely living up to the expectations in 94 to run between McGrath and Stanton is quite an achievement for a 250 rookie. He, he rode a couple 250 races last year, but this will be his first full season. He's in exactly the same position Jeremy was a year ago. Uh, a few differences. He's a newlywed. Uh, I think he's got a lot to prove. And boy, he is doing everything they would have asked of him to know. And he came into this very first race of the season not quite 100%. Uh, they estimate about 85% because of a shoulder injury sustained in practice before the season started. Now, this guy, though, Dave Arnold says, has no pain threshold. At least we haven't found it yet. Stanton, though, the expert, takes the inside. It's a real battle between teammates. I'll tell you what, when he gets that other 15% back, he's going to make life miserable for Jeff Stanton. Jeff set him up nicely, got around, made the move, and now it's McGrath versus Stanton. 1-2 for the Orlando win. Can he catch him? I don't think so. Stanton always in great shape, but the question now is, here's Mike LaRocco coming up on Lampson. LaRocco has been cutting the times off of each lap, about a second a lap. What a terrible start he got. What an incredible charge he's turned in. Look at that move. Up and over, and LaRocco keeps the heat on Lampson through the whoops. He's very quick. He's got sections of this racetrack down to the point where, as you mentioned, Art, he's clipping a second a lap off the leader, and that's tough to do. And he's picking it up as he gets away from the traffic. Lampson, four. LaRocco right behind him, trying to make his move. Mike won the thing two years in a row. It's virtually the same racetrack this year. He likes it a bunch. Plus, again, not to belabor the point, he is healthy. See that square off move we talked about in the heat? It's really working well here in the main event. But give Lamp some credit. LaRocco's pressuring him. He's not passing him. Here he there goes. There he goes. LaRocco finally taking Lampson, and he's looking forward to McGrath and Stanton. We'll be back. Welcome back to Orlando, Florida, the first Supercross event of the year. And McGrath is leading, but here is Mike LaRocco. He has been chipping away on the lead. Currently, he has his sights fixed on Doug Henry for third place. Henry, a good, consistent rider, but is not as fast as LaRocco. LaRocco challenging him right now. Again, it's that issue of momentum. Here we come to the corner that he takes the different line, squares it off, goes inside, and what that does is gives him position into the next left-hander, and once again, he makes it work. He's around Henry. He has passed half of Team Honda, the 1-800-Collect team now. <laughs> he is the fastest man on the racetrack. The back markers are, are staying alertly out of the way of this tremendous charge by Mike LaRocco. He has his sights on Jeff Stanton now. Boy, I tell you, this is impressive. This is a guy who not only looks like a potential uh, three-peat winner here in Orlando, this is a guy who looks like he could go on and win everything the way he's riding tonight. This is perfect. What has to be going through Jeremy McGrath's mind now as he gets his pit board from Skip Norfolk, his mechanic, about the progress of Mike LaRocco coming up from behind. Well, Jeremy is so far out in front, he may not be concerned about it, but look at LaRocco go after Stanton. Jeff says, excuse me, put a little block on him there to keep him at bay, but I don't think for long LaRocco is going to go around Jeff Stanton. With the kind of speed that he's got here tonight, I'm not sure he won't catch Jeremy McGrath. Only time will tell if there's enough laps for LaRocco at this pace to catch up with Jeremy McGrath. Stanton doing a veteran yeoman-type job, though, of blocking him out. And let's don't overlook the fact that Jeremy McGrath is about six seconds in front of this battle. So LaRocco's still going to have a lot of work cut out for him if he can get around Stanton. And now I'm not so sure that's going to happen. In two laps, he got by the two other members of Team Honda, but Stanton, for the moment, seems to be rising to the occasion here. LaRocco, at my last count, was 13 seconds off the pace of the leader. So he's certainly been able to pick up time while battling Stanton, and he takes Stanton. Let's see if... Uh, Jeff can come back. It's pressure. You keep the pressure on, eventually you're going to find the opening. If you've got that front wheel right there all the time in position to stuff it in, you're going to go. See, he's gone. It, he's definitely faster than Stanton. He just needed to find the hole and get around. This track getting pretty rutted. But LaRocco picks the right ruts, that's for sure, because he's picked up a lot of time. But does he have the time to catch Jeremy McGrath? That I'm not too sure about. Well, that's a long shot, but uh, he's getting all the information he needs from this guy. That's Dad. 
who says four laps to go. Four laps, six seconds. That would qualify as a miracle. The exciting finish coming up soon from Orlando. The countdown is on for the mighty Ford Coors Light Challenge AMA Supercross Series. See it live March 26th, Charlotte's Memorial Stadium. April 9th and 10th, Pontiac Silverdome. April 16th, Minneapolis Metrodome. April 23rd, Texas Stadium. May 7th, Seattle Kingdome. June 4th, San Jose Spartan Stadium. And the finals June 11th, Las Vegas Silver Bowl. Don't wait. Get your AMA Supercross tickets now. What's the next thing, Dion? Soccer, anyone? <laughs> Must be a fan. Power it. It's not the old thing. It's the next thing. And that's a good thing. Should have worn my helmet. Power it. The next thing. I mean, when she gets close, it's no time to get in a sweat. The protection you need is clear. If I get close and he smells, no way. The protection you need is clear. New clear, arid, extra, extra dry. The new antiperspirant so clear, it's invisible. When we're together, who needs distractions? Get a little closer with new clear, arid, extra, extra dry. Solid and gel. Yeah, I trust arid. Jim Rome's Glossary Primer, number 108. Milk carton. Sometimes a professional athlete becomes a professional bench warmer. If he's not on the bench, he's in the box, in the dugout, injured, depressed, oh, whatever. He's not out there. You don't see him all season. He's missing. So logically, if he's missing, he should be on a milk carton. Watch Rome, speak Rome. <laughs> talk to, phone in sports talk with a language all its own. Tonight, 10.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Forget shouldn't or should have. On your mark. Wouldn't or could have. Get set. Might have but didn't. Can't but should. Someday I may. Love to but haven't. I would if you would. I wish that I did. Truth is, you can if you want to. And they're off. And you will if you do. Welcome back to Orlando. Even though Mike Morocco, while we were away, picked up two seconds a lap, I don't think it's enough. It doesn't look like it's enough here on the final lap to catch Jeremy McGrath. McGrath would have to fall down. It may not be enough, Art, but Mike Morocco is going to be remembered for a terrific charge here this evening. Yeah, looks like Jeremy McGrath going home with the season opener. But look here, an interval that was six seconds, four laps ago, is down to less than a straightaway as Morocco is going to make this close. Great conditioning on the behalf of both riders. Morocco taking three months away from home, only a week off for Christmas to train before the season started. Certainly had the endurance factor to come back into this race. And of course, Jeremy McGrath just does not crack when he's out in front. McGrath said he was ready to stop all the talk. He was tired of all the preseason hype. He just wanted to get this thing underway and get back to business. And he obviously came prepared passed early in the race by two men. You don't see that happen very often. He came back. He's established himself as the champion. He takes the checkers. Jeremy McGrath stated before the race, I just wanted to get on the podium. Well, he does more than that. He takes the first win of the season. And Mike LaRocco turns in the charge, perhaps of a lifetime, to a very close second. Stanton, Henry, Lampson rounding out the top five as we see the top ten here. Let's go to Motor World 2's Jerry Bernardo. Hey, Mike, you started out in about 12th and moved right up to second right away. How'd you feel? Well, uh, you know, I felt like I was riding good. I was just a little disappointed in my start. Uh, you know, like I said, I, need, I needed to get out front to, to beat Jeremy, and, and I was too far back to do that. So that's what I'm a little unha unhappy with. I think we will count you gaining about a second per lap and reeling him in. Did you feel like you could catch him, or did you just feel like you were going to run out of time? Well, I knew that the time would be short, but I, I knew I had the speed to win. I just didn't know how, you know, how far I could get on it. So. You put on a hell of a show. Good job. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. It was his 11th Supercross 250cc victory. The man of the hour once again. Jeremy McGrath, season opener, numero uno. Staying true to your plate. I have no questions. You just tell me your thoughts. 
Well, Jerry, you know, I was going, going into the race, I was pretty dang nervous, you know, I, I have to admit, I'm, I think it's just going to get easier from here on out. And, uh, you know, it's a tough track, it was really rutted, and the rock was on the gas for sure. Uh, but I did just what I wanted to do, I got a good start, I kind of screwed up there in the middle, like third lap or so, but I got it together and started riding and uh, pulled it off. Well, did we answer any questions today? Well, it's always woulda, coulda, <laughs> shoulda, you know, that's the story of motorsport. Look, everybody's smiling, okay, for one thing. That's the first time I've seen Jeff Stanton smile on a podium in over a year. But I don't want to belabor Stanton. I've made my case for him. Jeremy McGrath is still the top dog in Supercross until somebody beats him. Can he do it next week at the Houston Astrodome? Art Ekman, along with Dave.